This is your Barbados Today Morning News Update for Monday, February 14. Prime Minister Mia Motley and a delegation of public and business officials are in Guyana to attend the International Energy Conference and Expo this week. During the four-day visit, Motley will also hold talks with Guyanese President Erfram Ali to address cooperation between Bridgetown and Georgetown in a number of areas. Prime Minister Motley will also engage the leaders of Suriname and Ghana and meet with business leaders. In other news this Monday, the Alliance Party for Progress, APP, declares it's committed to fighting on behalf of the people of Barbados despite its failure to win any seats in the January 19 election. At a public meeting on Sunday held at the Cricket Legends of Barbados, party leader Bishop Joseph Adderley says his party will seek to formulate policies to benefit citizens. We are about people-centered policies. We believe policies must flow from the bosom of the people to the benefit of the people. Is that important? It is important. What is now the actuality? Policies formulated and shaped in Barbados too often come from the bosom of select interest groups in Barbados. Ferdy was at pains to tell you now, much of the policy formulation which we now adopt in Barbados comes through outside external influence and pressure on our government and our desire, our sense of need to comply with the dictates that come from abroad, even when they threaten long held and cherish values in Barbados. We want to comply. Avali raised concerns about the problem of corruption, and he chided government for failing to bring forward legislation to tackle the problem. We need to see, and this is a very strong point for us in the Alliance Party for Progress, the elimination of corruption through the implementation of potent legislation intended to counter the further drift into practices of corruption in Barbados. You can't just talk about it. You can't just introduce legislation to the Parliament of Barbados when international institutions suggest that you have to comply. It is in the interest of Barbadians that corruption at the highest levels in Barbados is stamped out. Corruption robs an economy of productive dollars. One of the reasons why we are where we are financially is because of corruption in various forms. Government is getting the thumbs up for its decision to lift the curfew and ease restrictions starting today. At the weekend, Health Minister Ian Gooding Edgel announced that pleasure craft boats and party cruises will be allowed to operate. Hikes will resume and there will be no restriction on beach activities and parts, among other things. Chairman of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Rene Copping, says direct tourism service providers, including catamarans, nightclubs and tour companies, are delighted to be able to return to full capacity. And restaurants are also happy with the move so that they can extend their hours of operation. Meanwhile, the head of the COVID-19 monitoring unit, Ronald Chapman, has assured the public that the unit will continue to ensure a safe environment for all. At a weekend COVID-19 press conference update, Chapman urged Barbadians to act wisely and to use good judgment to keep COVID-19 cases low and to ensure a further reduction in restrictions. We will continue to move deliberately. We will continue to move slowly, um, incrementally to ensure that we reduce the level of, that we increase the, the freedoms or reduce the level of restrictions while ensuring a safe environment. We all welcome these eases. We all welcome a, a gradual return to the norm. And as we, as we continue as a people to follow the protocols, to act wisely, and as the Prime Minister would say, to lend our hearts to wisdom, we will see a further falling of the cases and we will also see further um, reduction of the restrictions. 
Meanwhile, Chief Medical Officer the Dr. The Most Honorable Kenneth George reported a 19% reduction in new COVID-19 infections over the last week in comparison with the last seven-day period. I'm happy to report that there is a decline of 19% in newly confirmed cases in the past seven days in comparison with the previous seven days. The seven-day cumulative incidence is currently 1,206 cases per 100,000 population. The daily average number of cases is 495 down from a daily average of 692 two weeks ago. The R effective as of February the 11th is 0 0.84. However, though there is a downward trajectory in our positivity rate, we would like to see this also improve. We are currently, our positivity rate is approximately 23.4% a decline from a high of 26%. Now to the latest COVID-19 update, there were 313 new positive cases, 160 males and 153 females, from the 1,530 tests conducted by the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory on Saturday. Of these, 51 persons are under the age of 18 and 262 were 18 years and older. The number of persons in isolation facilities was 155, while 6,018 were in home isolation. Four people, three men and one woman, died from the viral illness on Saturday. Two of the men aged 64 and 81 were fully vaccinated, while the third, who was 80 years old, was unvaccinated. They passed away at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility. The vaccinated woman, age 87, was pronounced dead on arrival at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility. The death toll now stands at 299. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, Make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings, Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness says his country has reached its limit for the COVID-19 restrictions and measures imposed under the Disaster Risk Management Act will come to an end soon. We get the details from CVM Television. Prime Minister Andrew Holness announces that the DRMA will come to an end soon. He insists that Jamaica must return to normalcy after being disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic. And what we are seeing happening, Madam Speaker, is that our society is being divided by the pandemic. Uh, and what we're seeing, Madam Speaker, is that this division is making it increasingly difficult for the government to do its job and to actually focus on the things that matter. I have indicated a few weeks ago that very soon we will have to bring the DRMA measures to an end. PM Holness says for the upcoming parliament, Jamaicans should expect more relaxed measures and a full return to face-to-face -face learning. He adds the consequences will be severe if the gap in education loss is not filled. On the international front, U.S. President Joe Biden told Vladimir Putin that the West would respond decisively to any invasion of Ukraine. He warned that any such move would produce widespread suffering and isolate Moscow. We get more of this report from Reuters TV. 
U.S. President Joe Biden told Russia's Vladimir Putin during an hour-long call on Saturday that a Russian invasion of Ukraine would bring a decisive and swift response from the West. Biden also said such a move would produce widespread suffering and diminish Russia's standing in the world. The two men spoke by phone in the latest effort to avert hostilities, just a day after Washington and its allies warned a Russian invasion could happen any time. Russia continues to deny having any such plans, saying it has amassed more than 100,000 troops near the Ukrainian border to maintain its own security against aggression by NATO allies. A senior Biden administration official said the call was professional and substantive, touching on all the issues the U.S. has raised in public, but added there was no fundamental change. The official said it remains unclear whether Putin is willing to pursue a diplomatic path. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.